This is Five Live Formula One with Jenny Gow. The streets of Monte Carlo can be a cruel and unforgiving place. And in one hour's time, we will know who will be successful when it comes to trying to grab pole position and who will find themselves on the wrong side of maybe a wall, a barrier, a turn, a tunnel. There are so many parts of this circuit that are just waiting to entrap you. 20 of the best drivers with 20 of the fastest cars will go out there and see what they can do. And I tell you what, there's nothing quite like it. This is qualifying for the Monaco Grand Prix. It's a difficult track. You really need to build up your confidence and take it step by step. Um, Cause you know, a tiny mistake is easily uh, into the wall here. So uh, yeah, it's uh, about finding the grip level, you know, how, how much grip there is uh, out there and then find the confidence within yourself, but also within the car, you know, to really push it. When you're driving a lap around Monaco, it's it, every time it's a dream. Uh, ever since I did Formula 3 here, when you do that first opening lap and you go through the tunnel, you just the, the video of, of Senna as a kid driving through the tunnel and with the gear shift one-handed kind of goes through, your, you rem reminisce on that. The Saturday is just something extremely special and for us drivers there's nothing that comes close to it. So uh, uh, it is different than other races in the calendar and that's exactly why I think it should stay. Verstappen, Hamilton, Leclerc, just some of the men going out there to fight for pole position. Jack Nichols, Jolian Palmer will talk us through all of the action. And Jack, this is the one they all want, isn't it? Yeah, really looking forward to this, actually. It was already exciting enough with Leclerc versus Verstappen for pole. The practice session so far, you started to be like, ah, maybe actually Leclerc's got this in the bag. But Sergio Perez popped up this morning, showing there is pace in the Red Bull. The championship leader, Verstappen, suddenly struggling a little. So... What happens now? That is the question. As I just make my way past the crowds, there's so many people here to try and get a little bit of the glitz and the glamour, to maybe see a little bit of history in the making. Jolian Palmer, no place like it. Saturday, Monaco. Blue skies have disappeared slightly. There's a lot of white clouds around, the temperature just dipping down. But what a show we're in for. I cannot wait for this. This is one of the great days of, of the, the great sessions, the great hours of <laughs> Formula One, the Formula One season, isn't it? Of Monaco motor racing, qualifying. Of motor racing. Of, mo of sport. Yeah. Let's take it as big as we can. The greatest hour of sport in the year, Monaco qualifying, one of the greatest hours. And uh, Go bold. If you're going to do it, Jolian, No, I've reined it back a little bit. We're too far. <laughs> but it's going to be great, isn't it? This is where the drivers push it to the maximum around this tight, twisty circuit that's got some fast flowing bits that have a bit of peril and this is where there's nowhere to, to hide you've got to go for it you've got to take the risks we saw it last year with the pole man then crashing that sort of thing can happen because the difference between success and hitting the wall is a paper's width it certainly is championship wise it's max verstappen who leads the way by six points just ahead of Charles Leclerc, the man who has four poles this season already. Verstappen only has one pole. Perez has the other pole for Red Bull. So who, who is going to get pole position? Who are you backing? Come on. We've all been talking about it over the last two hours. It's the only subject up for discussion here. I, I'm not backing anyone. I'm not doing it. What? <laughs> who are you backing? <laughs> I, I, I think, think you can't. Okay, my prediction my okay. is that Leclerc is going to take pole. I, I still think the Ferrari is, uh, is is fast. I think there's not much to separate the Ferrari and the Red Bull. But I really think Leclerc is one of the great qualifiers of, of Formula One at the moment. He's shown it already this year. I think Leclerc. I'm going to stick my neck out and say Leclerc for pole. Okay, but I don't think it's sticking your neck. I think anybody. You, the only answer, if you really are picking a favourite, the only answer is Leclerc in my opinion. I, but there's a chance for other people, but I couldn't say someone else. Because you just feel stupid, right, for not backing Leclerc when he's unbelievable. Well, Leclerc has got a reputation for getting pole position around here. He's not got a reputation for winning a race, but that's tomorrow. That's for another day. Today, it's all about who will be in pole position. The clock ticks down. Jack Nichols, over to you. Cars heading out then onto the circuit. The two Haas drivers straight out onto the track Mick Schumacher and Kevin Magnussen uh, the quickest lap time we've had so far this weekend a one minute uh, was uh, in free practice three earlier on a one minute 12.476 set by Sergio Perez so we are going to be 
maybe in the one minute 11s for pole position. Light goes green now at the end of the pit lane. If you're syncing up, well, that was quite a good moment to do it. But if not, 17 minutes and 54, three, two, one seconds left on the clock. And it is just going to be, it's a short lap this as well, both in terms of distance and in terms of time, to be honest. One minute and uh, 12, 11 seconds. You get quite a few bites at the cherry. Yeah. And the tyres can last more than just one lap as well. So uh, it's going to be a busy track out there with drivers on uh, on fast laps with some slow laps in between. You can't just pound round and uh, and still do two or three flies in a row. You've got to do slow laps uh, to recharge the battery, cool the tyres still. But they will give you a bit more grip lap two and three. So you can stay out there. And this part of qualifying, we've got 17 minutes left on the clock. We're going to see all 20 cars out there trying to get the laps in. And earlier on, we saw quite a lot of traffic, a couple of impeding warnings as well. So uh, that's what the, the drivers, and particularly the team personnel now, have got to look out for, for traffic coming behind. Because from the driver's point of view, when you're strapped into the cockpit, you can't see too much in your mirrors. You have to be direct with them from, uh, from your engineer. And the, the, these days, the cool-down laps are so, you want to be going, the drivers want to be going so slowly on their cool-down laps as well, that there's such a, a difference in speeds. Jenny. Yeah, just looking at track temperatures, they've fallen a fair bit from um, before the session started. It was 54.8, now down to 47.8 degrees centigrade. Air temperature, 26 degrees. It's a lovely day. Track temperatures dip quite a lot. Yep, so that'll make the surface slightly different to what the drivers were dealing with earlier on. So uh, Kevin Magnuson, uh, Mick Schumacher, in fact, is the first driver to come across the line and start a flying lap. Daniel Ricciardo uh, and Lando Norris actually is just coming through the final corner at Anthony Nogues and out across the line. And down towards turn one. Leclerc and Sainz, the two drivers, still in the pit lane at the moment. So they're putting themselves sort of out of sync traffic-wise, which is an interesting plan hoping that everyone else is going to come into the pits in uh, in a few laps time and they can stay out there a little bit longer and get a clear lap in that's all ferrari need at this point they've got a car that can easily get through into q3 and fight the pole you, they don't want to want to trip over a banana skin here of being caught out in traffic not getting a clean lap in having yellow flags out there there's plenty that can still go wrong for those guys so ferrari just staying a little bit later and uh, and they will hope then they can have a clear run in the middle of this session Lando Norris coming around the middle part of the lap now, down into the chicane at the end of the tunnel, the Nouvelle chicane. Kevin Magnussen's first lap time coming here, and he does a 1 minute 17.0 for Kevin Magnussen. Mick Schumacher, I think, has backed off on this lap, or... Oh, no, he might still be pushing, actually. He's coming around the final corner and across the line, and Schumacher goes quicker than Magnussen, actually, by uh, six hundredths of a second. Lando Norris going quickly. Uh, Albon goes third quickest now in the Williams. Here comes Norris out across the line, and he goes to the top times on 1.1 seconds ahead of Mick Schumacher. And then Bottas slots into second place. Sound you can hear now is the Mercedes of Lewis Hamill. Uh, sorry, it's George Russell. And the Mercedes have been struggling a little over the course of the of the weekend. I was right first time. It is Hamilton that you can hear. My apologies. He's on the fastest middle sector of anyone compared to Lando Norris anyway. And the Ferraris are still on their outlap. Perez is going quicker than Verstappen. Verstappen at the moment not on course to beat Norris. A 1 minute 15.391 for Lewis Hamilton. So it's so rare. It's so interesting for me, Monaco, because these first laps are 1 minute 15.3. They're so much slower than the lap times we were seeing earlier on, two seconds slower, Sergio Perez, but it's all about that confidence and getting into the zone a bit more. I, I imagine the track's just fallen away slightly in the couple of hours that, uh, that we've been uh, having lunch. I think the track's just, just, just fallen away. The tyre's not quite absolutely primed yet. They will get better and better, but they've lost a good nearly two seconds from what they did earlier on. Verstappen does a 14-2 and goes to the top of the times. Perez second. I had no grip whatsoever. Really, really sure. George Russell saying he had no grip whatsoever. He was 1.3 seconds slower than his teammate Lewis Hamilton. Uh, Verstappen, Perez, Hamilton, Ricardo, Sonoda the top five. That's encouraging for Ricardo to be three tenths quicker than his teammate Lando Norris. And then it is Bottas, Stroll, Russell and Vettel, the rest of the top ten. Leclerc on a lap now, four hundredths down on Verstappen after the first sector. I do feel like he's just going to get a load of traffic now, Leclerc, but maybe he won't. But 
feels like Ferrari have sort of played right into the into the hands of traffic, but we'll see what happens as he comes now through the tunnel, out into the Nouvelle Chicane. And he's going to get a little bit here as he comes through the left and then the right. It is the Red Bull that keeps nicely out of the way to the left-hand side. Into Tabak, out of Tabak, now through the swimming pool. And he actually hasn't got much traffic at all here, Charles Leclerc. That was, my, uh, that was the worry, but it's all been very plain sailing. Here he comes through the final corner, nearly got a little bit there at the, at the final turn, out through Anthony Nogues, and Leclerc comes through, and his first lap is a 14.8, six tenths slower than Max Verstappen. So Verstappen first, Perez second, Magnussen goes him into third place in the Haas, quicker than Leclerc in the Ferrari. So the time's coming down already then. Magnussen has done two flying laps, whereas everyone else has done uh, just one for the moment. Other drivers now doing a second flying lap. In fact, Fernando Alonso has done the fastest first sector of anyone in qualifying so far. Coming through the middle sector now, just pipped by Perez, who's going for another lap. The times are going to tumble. That's, that's what's part of the charm of this qualifying as well. It's not just one lap and then everyone pits and you know who's in trouble. It's just ever evolving. And Alonso goes to the top. 1 minute 14.148 for Fernando Alonso. Quicker than Lando Norris, who's now slots into second position. Verstappen and Perez are both improving on this lap. Perez really getting the back end out as he comes into the Nouvelle Chicane. The, the car just like, felt like it turned in an instant there. Yeah, well, he actually lost, lost it a little bit on the entry. Just had a big overstay, had to correct it. That's what you want. You need a, quite a pointy front end for these, uh, for the chicanes particularly. Just to, if you're waiting with understeer, it's, uh, it's horrible. Perez is looking just so confident at the wheel as well, though, able to really hustle it. And uh, he comes across the line now, and he's going to go back to the top of the times. But that's a good lap. Eight tenths now, quicker than Alonso. And Verstappen, I don't think he's going to beat it. Here he comes across the line, and he doesn't. A tenth slower than his teammate Sergio Perez. Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari now goes second, gets ahead of Max Verstappen, and does an identical lap time. What's going on? We are so much out of the... Uh sequence with the others. It's dangerous like this. Copy understood. We need to manage for this run. Leclerc saying we're out of sequence with everybody else and they're saying well we need to manage it for this run. So I guess the theory is when it comes to their final run on these tyres they'll have a clear track and they can get the job done. Everyone else will be back in the pits and then they won't need to run again in Q1. I guess that's the theory. I think that's what they were trying to do if it was intentional to go out slightly late. Magnussen's back in the pits now, as is Bottas, who's only 18th and did one flying lap, which wasn't rapid. But Schumacher as well is last, and they're back in the pits. If others now pit at the end of this lap, which they are doing, Vettel joins them, uh, Joe's in the pits, then Ferrari are going to have the tracks to themselves, and they can just bosh in a, a fast lap and safely get through into Q2. Ten minutes to go. Perez and Sainz doing an identical lap time at the top of the board, which is about the fourth time we've seen it this weekend. It's very, very strange. Feels a little bit spooky actually, but we'll, uh, we won't get too bogged down in that. Leclerc, uh, fastest first sector of anyone, fastest middle sector of anyone for Leclerc. He's half a second up here on Sergio Perez as he comes into the final sequence of corners, into the swimming pool, and then out again, round Raskas. Now Anthony Nogues out across the line. And how quick is this from Charles Leclerc? It's a one minute 12.9. Three and a half tenths quicker than Sergio Perez. Sainz in third, Verstappen fourth, Gasly fifth, Alonso sixth, Norris, Russell, Sonoda, Ricardo the top ten. And then it's Ocon, Stroll, Magnussen, Hamels and Albon the top 15. Eliminated as it stands would be Vettel, Joe, Bottas, Latifi and Schumacher. Whatever it was, this meant that the tracks just went away for that first lap. Just a, a layer of something onto the track almost and now it's cleaning up and they're immediately getting back to uh, to what they did earlier on in practice it was just a baffling lack of grip for everyone on the first lap now the improvements are, are coming in there was just some slow cars driving around in a procession i can't imagine they've yeah. done too much damage to, to the pirelli rubber that's been laid through the weekend it means the track evolution though is is huge and particularly in this q1 session the times with every lap drivers are finding half a second plus george russell into the final corner now and out across the line. He's currently ninth quickest. This will be an improvement, but only moves him up into eighth place. A one minute 13.852. And a bit of a slide from Daniel Ricciardo as he comes out of the final corner and does a one minute 14.062. Two tenths down on his teammate Lando Norris, Jenny. 
Yeah, Ricardo had a crash uh, yesterday, which meant that they had to rebuild the car. Chassis was OK, but I think he's lacking a little bit of confidence. He needs to find something today. And actually, that was a half-decent run for him. Absolutely. Verstappen now slotting into second place. And Leclerc quickest, Verstappen second, Perez third, Sainz fourth. So our Red Bull is still out there. Ferrari is still out there, whereas uh, most of the others are coming back into the pit lane at the moment. Seven minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Hamilton on a lap is pushing, has just done a personal best in sector one. A couple of tenths, a tenth and a half shy of Max Verstappen's fastest first sector. They tended to be quicker in the, in the middle sector, Mercedes, compared to sector one. So we'll see what Hamilton can do as he comes through Portier and out under the tunnel now, up to 100 and 80 miles an hour before getting onto the brakes into the Nouvelle Chicane. Actually only 175, but quick enough as he comes through the left and the right, right and then the left, and down towards Tabak. This is looking decent for Hamilton. Leclerc's going again and sets the fastest first sector of anyone. He needs this lap, Lewis Hamilton. It's much better. Within four tenths of Leclerc through the, through the middle sector, he's currently down in 14th and hasn't managed to put a lap in, even though he's on the most laps of anyone out there. Seven. He's, uh, he's not able to put in a fast lap until now. Comes out of the final corner, he's going to drive to the line, and it's going to jump him right up the order, and it goes sixth. Half a second away. That's, that's one of the better laps Mercedes have done this weekend so far. Yeah. Uh, Leclerc now through Anthony Noakes. He's going quicker than his previous time, and how much does he improve by? Four tenths. A 1 minute 12.569 now for Leclerc. Four tenths ahead of Verstappen. Sainz now does a 1 minute 12.6. But the Red Bulls are on a lap. Like, none of this matters. The Ferrari versus Red Bull stuff, you know, initially, because this is only the first part of qualifying. It's about who will get eliminated. But I just find it mesmerizing. Yeah, it's just trying to work out. The, the lap times just keep nudging down. And one minute Ferrari looked good. Then the next lap Ferrari is going slow. And Perez, for example, the sound you can hear now, is uh, flying. Personal best in the, in the first sector. Verstappen also is improving. Both Red Bulls now trying to respond to that Ferrari pace. They're all safely through, I think, the uh, the Ferraris and Red Bulls. They've done what they needed to do. There's less than six minutes left on the clock. Plenty of drivers still in the pits, and they'll go for one last hurrah. It's just about just getting more laps in and, and fine-tuning your driving and the setup of the car. Schumacher's out on track, so he pitted earlier than everybody else, really. So he's going for quite a few laps on this, uh, on this soft tyre, whereas Bottas and Joe, for example, still in the pit so they're just going to do an out and a push straight away which is interesting considering we're seeing how much time can be found doing doing longer runs uh, Leclerc then quickest Sainz second Verstappen only did a 13-0 on that last lap quicker than his teammate Sergio Perez who's in fourth position and then it's four tenths back to Alonso in fifth as it stands eliminated would be Vettel Joe Latifi Bottas and Schumacher although here comes Schumacher across the line Jumps a bit at seventh place. Good lap that from Schumacher. Track evolution, etc. But that's uh, that's very very decent indeed. Albon now is coming through the exit of the swimming pool, and we'll see what he can do. But they might be able to get another lap in Schumacher. Whereas your Joes and your Bottases and your Latifis are uh, going to be out just doing one lap. I think they might be able to get two in. They've they've left the pits now. Everyone's left the pits apart from Hamilton's in there. Track evolution is huge. Albon goes eighth on a similar pace to uh, to Schumacher then. He's a tenth and a half down. Magnussen, though, goes fifth. Track evolution is whopping. Has Hamilton Magnuson... got to get out here? Has Hamilton got to get onto the track? He's seventh at the moment, only two tenths, though, ahead of Alex Albon. He's got to think about it, absolutely. And uh, he's got time to still get out there and get another lap in. And he has just left and uh, left the pits to get back out there. I think he has to, with Magnussen going a full four tenths quicker than Lewis Hamilton. The track is just coming alive now. You cannot afford to just rest in the pits unless you've already done uh, pretty much a session topping time. Yeah, that's where Verstappen and Perez are back in the pit lane. And uh, Leclerc and Sainz in the Ferraris are still out there on circuit. But I think the Red Bulls will be fine. Three minutes and 45 seconds to go. And uh, yeah, they are just getting wheeled back into the garage, Sergio Perez. So that will be the end of his running for the day or for the session anyway. Uh, through comes Latifi now into the swimming pool. He's three tenths down on Ocon's time and Ocon's 15th quickest at the moment so this isn't going to pull up any trees for Latifi. Sonoda, Vettel, Joe, Latifi and Bottas the drivers that will be eliminated at the moment but all are improving. Those on the bubble are Ricardo and Ocon. They are on outlaps uh, as is Lando Norris about to start a flyer. So Latifi goes up into 16th place 
quicker than Sonoda, Vettel, Joe and Bottas. Meanwhile, uh, Bottas is just on the brakes into the Nouvelle Chicane at the end of the tunnel. Lance Stroll didn't do a great lap on his new tyres. He's actually the slowest of anyone bar Latifi. He went slower than Albon. So Stroll only 11th and will be under pressure at some point once others improve. Russell's going better in the uh, in the Mercedes. Decent first sector and the middle sector is only one tenth from Leclerc. So this is a much better lap from Russell, who's just been shuffled out to 14th because Vettel's gone quicker, but not even as quick as Stroll. So both Aston Martins are in trouble. Here comes Bottas across the line. It's up in the ninth place, only just ahead of Alex Albon in the Williams. That lap from Albon's looking better and better all the time. Russell goes third fastest. Ahead of the Red Bulls, a one minute 12.7, but there's a red flag being shown. So somewhere, someone has uh, has run into some trouble. Red flag with two minutes and 25 seconds on the clock. There's no one in the wall down here at uh, the exit of the swimming pool. So we'll wait and see uh, who has come unstuck out there. Here's Sonoda. Uh, and it's Sonoda. So we don't know where he's hit the barrier, but he has hit the barrier. He's just got back into the pits, I think. Did he? I think he might have hit it at Raskas. Oh, yeah, you're right. He's in the pits, Sonoda. I mean, that might be a separate thing. Or is there a bit of debris lying around? We haven't seen anything on the uh, on the pictures yet. As it stands, there's 2 minutes 25 left in the session. So Ricardo and Ocon are in major trouble here. They're currently 16th and 17th and out. They were on better laps, but the red flag's going to negate all that. So they're going to have an out lap and one flyer to try and find some uh, performance to get themselves into Q2. Sonoda's car doesn't look very damaged. He's come back into the pit lane and, uh, well, let's have a, a look at what happened with Yuki Sonoda coming down into the Nouvelle Chicane, turns into the left and just clips the front left, gets an instant front left puncture. So that's where the damage is for Sonoda, but the front wing was on the car and everything. So maybe the just a, a bit of a keen red flag Session will resume at 16.20. Oh, I don't know about that red flag. Very keen, isn't it? Red Very flag keen. for that. We've seen quite a few keen red flags this year, haven't we? Where were the other ones? Um, uh, I'm certain that was... Imola. A... Imola, when people were off and then driving back on the... Yeah, 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 yeah that was it. ...through the gravel. Someone Aquaman would be in Arale. the gravel. That was it. At Imola, you had people off in the gravel at Aquaminerali. Norris was one, wasn't he? And they instant red flag, but then they just drove out again. There was one earlier on in the, the Formula Regional yep. race, and there was a bit of a pile-up car park at the Fairmont hairpin, only the cars then managed to sort of reverse and negotiate themselves round before the leaders came back through, Mick but Schumacher. the red flag was already out, Mick so they Schumacher. had to just park up and halt the race. Mick Schumacher yesterday, free practice, broke down at pit entry. Yep, another one. Yeah. Uh, in the name of safety, but I, I don't. Sonoda was still managing to drive and, and hobble his way back. Yeah, it's maybe it's a fairness thing. Instead of everybody getting their laps ruined by a yellow flag, just throw a red flag and everyone can have one more go. But the yellow flag for what? It would be a white flag for a slow-moving vehicle, I think, not a yellow flag for Sonoda there. Very and, it, and actually, in fairness, thing this has impacted drivers more than just just having a, a single yellow or a, or a white flag. I mean, Ocon and Ricardo, Sonoda's made his own trouble. He's down in 19th and, uh, and probably going. Joe just crossed the line but didn't get the lap in when, uh, when the red flag came out. I don't know if it would have been good enough to be through or not anyway because it hasn't stood. And then Ricardo and Ocon, because that red flag came out as they were coming through the third sector, they had to immediately pit and they're in major trouble. Jenny. Yeah, I think Russell did well, didn't he? he? Came across the line, set that lovely time to put him third in the Mercedes, which is almost unthinkable when you think of the form that he had yesterday. Uh, and he seems very comfortable in that car again and got the timing right again is he the luckiest driver at the moment in formula one i feel like he could be depends what happens in the next two and a half minutes doesn't it well i think he'll be through to be fair but uh this is going to be very very bad and everybody is queuing to go out here so I, I don't know if anyone everyone will get across the line in time i would have thought because they've got almost you know two laps the, the driver first out could get two laps in they won't but like there's enough time on the board so they should all get a lap in but Yellow flags and everything could be a bit scuppering. The order is Ricardo, Ocon, Latifi, Sonoda and Joe. Those are the five drivers that would be eliminated as it stands. Yeah, this is going to be tight to trying to get the lap in, but we will let you know and we'll call it. 
Hamilton being told it's going to be tight getting the lap in. I think that is a strong performance from Albon. I think that's a good lap from Albon. Yeah, really good. 11th quickest ahead of the Aston Martins on uh, on genuine pace. There are others that haven't got a second lap in on the, on the new tyres. The likes of Norris, Ricardo, Gasly's down to 12th. He did a cracking job on the first run, didn't get a lap in. And so that's helped Albon now be in 11th place. And if anything else happens, he's going to be through. It's going to be a really tough ask for everyone to get these tyres fired up on, a, on a, what is going to be a very slow outlap with everyone jostling for position and then get them fired up, have track position so you're not starting the lap right behind someone else and hook up a, a majestic lap to get through. It's so tough for the drivers to, to find an improvement here. Yeah, and some of these drivers are, are, are going to be going out right at the end and they're going to... I think the Haas drivers aren't making it round to, to start another lap, I'm pretty sure. There's a lot of drivers aren't going to make a lap. They're, they're still queuing coming out of the pits. We've got a minute 35 left on the clock. Bedlam in the pit lane. Yeah. Uh, so, one minute and 25 seconds to go. I mean, are we even going to see any improvements because of all those tyre things you said? It's going to be quite something if anyone can find an improvement. Uh, Ricardo, Ocon, Latifi, Sonoda, Joe, the five drivers eliminated. Norris is right on the bubble in 15th position. Vettel is 14th, Stroll is 13th, Gasly is 12th, and then Albin in 11th. I think those are the drivers that are, that are under big threat. Uh, the top five have all stayed in the pits. Well, Ricardo and Norris and Ocon have all got themselves fair way round this lap. And Latifi and Sonoda's back out there as well. So they might all get a lap in. I don't know if Joe's going to get a lap in. He's one of the later ones out. He's only at Mirabeau. And there's less than 50 seconds to go. So that's going to be tight. I don't see Joe getting the lap in and he's currently plumb last. Right. Uh, Alex Albon starting another lap as he climbs the hill. Up through... Beau Rivage and then into Massenet, swings it right and starts the descent past the casino. Really up to the wall on the uh, on the exit of the uh, left right hander at Casino Square there, Alex Albin. And he has done a personal best in sector one, so he is finding some time. Uh, Alonso starts a lap now, as does Vettel. We've got 10 seconds left on the clock. Ricardo starts a lap. I don't know if Ocon's going to make it. He might just here. Ocon across the line does make it to start a lap. Yuki Tsunoda, the cause of that mystery red flag, he has managed to start the lap. Joe does not. Big, big trouble for uh, Alfa Romeo. Gasly didn't. Gasly's 12th and didn't make it across. He's been rapid this weekend, Pierre Gasly. Looking at a sort of top five, top six finish, <laughs> he was sent out behind Tsunoda. Tsunoda made it by about one second. Gasly is in 12th and the checker flag has shown for him so if other drivers can improve and they are improving he could be very very unlucky in this one Alex Albin across the line and he remains in 11th position the other Williams of Nicholas Latifi wrestling his way out of the final corner and he doesn't improve he remains in 18th so really it's Ricardo Norris Vettel Stroll who are going to be the interesting ones Vettel goes up into seventh place so at the moment it's Ricardo who is eliminated in 16th Ocon is in 17th but they're both improving currently Sonoda coming through the middle sector now as well here comes Norris across the line he goes up into fourth place so Stroll now is on the bubble and not improving Gasly's in 14th up now goes Ricardo into ninth Gasly surely is going to get knocked out here all depends really on Esteban Ocon and Yuki Sonoda Ocon across the line and he gets out so Gasly is eliminated Ocon goes fourth quickest and Albon is out as well because there was an improvement in the end from Yuki Tsunoda, who went up to ninth place. So Albon, Gasly, Stroll, Latifi and Joe, the five drivers eliminated. Joe and Gasly, unfortunate. The others, slow. I, Alpha Tauri have dropped the clangor there. Yeah, They've weird. dropped the clangor. They had to get Gasly out ahead of Tsunoda and, and towards the front of that group, because he's got pace to be well inside the top 10 and scoring major points this weekend. He was, what, fifth quickest earlier on in practice? and he's out in 17th on a track where overtaking is so difficult. Remember how good he was here last year as well, holding back Lewis Hamilton. That's P18 last time, I'm afraid. Ah! Did a 15-9 last stroll on, on that last lap, so it must have been some kind of uh, error, I would presume, for stroll, and that was his frustration that you heard there. Second part of qualifying will start in five and a half minutes' time. Man, unbelievable. I'm afraid, John. Box is left, box, box. I don't know what you say, honestly. 
red flag at the wrong time then. Red flag at the wrong time. A mystery red flag. I mean, it must have been for Sonoda. But he never stopped moving. That was the weird part. He never stopped moving. Whether did they want to sweep some shards of carbon fiber away from the apex? Possibly. It was it was a bizarre one. If that's a race, then they're just carrying on. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't really get why that was red flag in the first place. And it has cost drivers quite majorly. Pierre Gasly is is absolutely one of them. Joe not happy either. The rest of them actually probably deserve to be out. Yeah, Albon yeah. did a good job, but not quite enough. Managed to improve, had a nice clear track at the end and was just seven hundredths away from Valtteri Bottas. Stroll didn't, he managed to get out for a lap at the end. His first lap wasn't great, was already going to be in danger. And then uh, obviously not happy with himself in the car, I think, and out in 18th. And Latifi was uh, was 19th then. They deserve to be out. Really, is Joe maybe a bit unlucky. He only just missed getting the lap time in when the red flag came out as well by, by one or two seconds, a bit like Sainz in Melbourne. So he yeah. he legitimately should not be last. And, uh, and Gasly should be wider, right up there. Five drivers eliminated in the first part of qualifying. Alex Albon in 16th, Gasly, Stroll, Latifi and Joe all knocked out. The two Ferraris were quickest in first and second. They're looking very strong as we move on now to the second part of qualifying and it's on Sports Extra. Jenny Gao. Yeah, I was looking at the wheel of Sonoda. I mean, there was quite a lot of damage. It looked like someone had put their fist through it, to be totally honest. And that's the wheel, <laughs> the alloy bit that you can imagine. So I think there was quite a bit of damage. And I also think in this culture of new race directors, they're going to throw a red flag more quickly than, you know, in the old days. And but what for? I think but they're nothing, just going, was, I know, I know, I'm not, I'm not saying it's the right thing. I'm just trying to, trying to justify it in some way or other, because, I mean, gosh, you know, my job is one of the best jobs in the world, I believe. But interviewing Pierre Gasly in a moment is not going to be particularly comfortable. He's going to be furious. He's already over the bridge. Yeah. We've just seen him already over the bridge, storming back. Storming, storming, storming Norman. to you. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be, well, I feel for him. I think we all feel for him at times like that. You heard, you heard Lance Stroll being really angry. I don't think he was justifiably, I mean, he must have been frustrated himself. He made a mistake potentially, but you probably would have expected in that car at the moment for them to go out in the first part of qualifying. You wouldn't have expected that from Gasly, and he was just very unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily against an early red flag, broadly speaking, because, you know, better to be safe than sorry and, you know, things like that. But there's nothing to red flag. That's the thing I'd like. Sonoda never stopped. He just drove back to the pit slowly. It's like red flagging it because someone gets a puncture. Yeah, that's, that's effectively what happened. The only thing that might be mitigation is if they felt they there was too much carbon fiber down on the apex of the chicane because that's where he, he smashed the wall and they had to sweep. If they did, they swept it in record time yeah. because it was very, very quickly turned around for green again. That's the only thing that I would say is potential mitigation. David says, why don't they change the rules for these red flag restarts so it's the first car around that starts the clock when they start their lap? Otherwise, it all becomes a little bit unfair. Maybe they, maybe they, uh, I don't mind that as a sort of idea to be. Trying to orchestrate that is tricky. We'll, we'll be here for half an hour. No, but no, no, right no. Cars through. No, but if like, no, but no, I, I think or maybe I'm misreading him, but maybe it's like if there's less than a certain amount of time left, let's say three minutes or it's track dependent and there's a red flag, then you don't do you don't start the clock. You just send everyone out, they do a lap. Yeah. It's nah. not a terrible idea. It's all right, but red flag rules are sort of fine, but just when there's a genuine red flag, you know that everyone knows the risk around this circuit. Yeah. You know, the next part of qualifying, there could easily be a red flag towards the end. So if you are in danger, then that's part of the risk, particularly of, of a street circuit. You then just, they, they did have time to get out there if Alpha Tauri had sent the cars to the end of the pit lane quicker. Yeah. And if they'd just even sent Gasly ahead of Sonoda, it would have been a sensible thing to do because Gasly's the, the form driver. Sonoda, by the way, just been the one that's whacked his car and, and caused the red flag. Surely at that point, you just send Gasly out as your main hope and make sure that he's still in. As it was, Sonoda did a great job to, to get through in ninth place. Cars queuing up at the end of the pit lane in this second part of qualifying. They want to be getting these laps in, don't they? Jenny? 
tell you what, the humidity levels have just jumped up massively. I think, I mean, everyone's talking about a storm coming in tomorrow, could be a wet race. I'll bank on it right now because this is, the conditions have changed so quickly from this morning to now. 48% humidity. I think in Barcelona it was like 1% or something. So uh, cars out on the circuit. Straight away, Sainz, Verstappen, Leclerc, Perez. They want to be getting a lot of laps in here. I wonder if Q3 will be different because we see this quite often in like a Q2, but then Q3 everyone just still does one lap and the hot lap. But maybe it'll be different this year. In Q1 at the start, that was um, there was horrible track conditions for everyone. It took a while to get the pace back. On that second run there, the, the lap times were coming for most people. Everyone that got a lap in at the end actually jumped right up the order in just one flying lap. So I still think the pace is there. They want the, the lap times, or the, the lap count, don't they? They certainly do. Top 10 then will be decided in this second part of qualifying. They'll all be on the soft tyres and they can all choose what they want to start the Grand Prix on tomorrow when it comes down to it tomorrow afternoon here in Monaco. This is qualifying for the Monaco Grand Prix here on Five Live Sports Extra with Jolian Palmer, myself, Jack Nichols and Jenny Gow down in the uh, in the pits. And it was Leclerc ahead of Sainz in that first part by a decent chunk, to be honest. Leclerc had half a second or so over Max Verstappen. And Verstappen is now the driver coming down into the first corner at saint -Devot. Now climbing the hill up Beau Rivage. Left at Massonet. Hugs the inside, then goes away and then comes back again. And whoa, he's really pushing on this one, Verstappen. It was really almost like a four-wheel drift slide coming through uh, Casino Square. Yeah, it was lovely looking back at him uh, just going over the, uh, the bump at uh, the exit of Casino Square. Really nice stuff, good car control, hustling on. This is where the Red Bulls and Ferraris now, you are still expected to be in the top 10, absolutely. The pressure is up though, because some of those midfielders are pretty decent. And we, we've just seen with the red flags, There's a, you don't want to be one of those drivers that are left in, in danger late on. So Verstappen ringing the neck of the Red Bull early on. He was just quicker than Perez in the last part of qualifying, but only by a, a hundredth of a second. So there's still not much to separate them. Well, Perez is two tenths quicker in sector one than Verstappen. So, so Max is, is having to push on because he's not getting the most out of the Red Bull at the moment. He's coming into the final corner now, out across the line, and the first lap time set by Verstappen, it's a 12.551, so he's four tenths quicker than he managed in the first part of qualifying. Perez is going quicker, Sainz is also going quicker. Sainz is going to be the first of those two to set his lap time, and it's a 12.0 for Carlos Sainz, half a second quicker than Verstappen, but Perez goes quicker as well. A 12-0 for Perez. He is half a second quicker than his teammate, but Leclerc through the middle sector is up on both of them. Bouncing over the curbs at the exit of the swimming pool, down into La Rascas. Swings it right at Anthony Nogues, and then drives towards the line. It's gonna be close here between Leclerc and Perez, and Leclerc doesn't beat his teammate. They're all on a 12.0. Perez, Sainz and Leclerc, 1 minute 12.0, Max Verstappen half a second away in fourth place. This is quite remarkable. And it, was, it wasn't just in one sector or one big mistake for Verstappen, it was two tenths in the first sector, another three in the middle. The final sector I think was okay for, for Verstappen. But the, the gap is big, isn't it? And Perez now is taking the fight to the two Ferraris. It's still Q2, it still doesn't really matter for them. The crunch time is going to be later on in Q3. It's just more indication that Verstappen's not absolutely comfortable in that car. Uh, Magnussen and Schumacher are about to, uh, well, actually, Russell did a, did a prep lap. We're just getting a replay of Perez well, coming through to back. He's just got a little bit of tape or something just above the, hooked onto the sort of halo above him, and he unhooked it and threw it away. So nothing particularly thrilling there for, for Sergio Perez. Verstappen back in the pits then. So that was just an out lap and a push, although he's... Driven straight through, I think. So maybe a quick front wing change or something for, for Verstappen. Perez is doing similar. What's he doing? Has he just gone straight through? Oh, no, he's got stopped at the Weybridge. But we'll, we'll keep an eye on what's going on there for Sergio Perez and what they decide to do. Because Verstappen seemingly just went straight through the pit lane and, uh, and didn't change anything or do anything.
Sounds like a front wing change for Verstappen, particularly for a driver that's half a second away from the pace and needs to uh, to find a little bit of form at the moment. Perez still in the garage, so he's, he's having a long old trip on the way bridge. Now they're pushing him down towards the uh, the crew. Red, both Red Bulls doing the same thing. Yep, Perez actually had to go back off the way bridge and then back onto it, and now he's managed to, to get off. 10 minutes to go in the session. Hamilton is fifth quickest, a one minute 12.8 and uh, Russell goes slower than Hamilton by a tenth of a second. Uh, nine minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Second part of qualifying, everybody on circuit, bar Perez, who's just left the, the way bridge now, and basically drives straight through the pits. So it doesn't even stop at the Red Bull garage, Sergio Perez. So that's a bit of an odd one. So what are they doing then, Red Bull? I don't Bull? know, because Verstappen doing the same, unless they're doing a, a double cool down and it's sort of safer and easier to come through the pits instead of going slowly down the start straight. Rears are too hot, mate. Yeah, copy that, uh, it'll still be a single call there. Hamilton saying the rears are too hot and the team saying, okay, but you're only gonna be doing a single cool lap. So maybe they're just, maybe they're doing a, a double cool Red Bull and, and coming through the pits is easier. Gosh, when you then find the wave bridge and lose two or three minutes, isn't it? Well, yeah, absolutely. Maybe that, maybe that is the case. It's bizarre to so need to go straight out, pump in one lap, and then come back through the pits but not do anything. Verstappen starts another lap now. Seitz and Leclerc are starting their laps now as well. Uh, Mick Schumacher is also in the pits for Haas. He's the only driver in the pit lane. As Valtteri Bottas goes through the exit of the swimming pool. The Alpha Tauri keeps out of the way. Oh, sorry, the Hass it was, kept out of the way nicely. Bottas out of the final turn and out across the line. Verstappen is not improving on this lap. Leclerc and Sainz both are. Bottas is 12th fastest, so the order at the moment, Perez, Sainz, Leclerc, Verstappen, Norris, the top five. Alonso, Hamilton, Russell, Ocon, Vettel, the top 10. Eliminated as it stands, Magnussen, Bottas, Sonoda, Ricardo, Schumacher. Verstappen took a lot of curve at the, at the Nouveau Chicane. Now he's coming through the swimming pool and up towards La Cas, but Leclerc is finding time. Perez starts a lap now, but nothing coming here from Verstappen. He's exactly three tenths down on Leclerc through the first sector alone. Still slower than uh, than Sainz and his teammate. He comes across the line, he's still three tenths down. Verstappen is just struggling this weekend. He's not finding form. Leclerc is a quarter of a second up. Sainz is coming back into the pits. Here comes Leclerc up to La Rascas through the final corner now at Anthony Noakes. And the Scarlet Ferrari is gonna go back to the top of the times here. A one minute 11.8. Two tenths ahead of Sergio Perez. Perez is improving. Told you, rear's not ready. Hamilton saying, I told you, the rears aren't ready. And he's come back into the pit lane. Russell did another lap and went eight tenths slower than he managed previously. So uh, no progress there. Sainz also has just come straight through the pits. So that must be something they're doing on a double cool down or something. Yeah, it must be. It must be. You must be exactly right then. A double cool down <laughs> coming through the pits. It shocks me as much as it shocks you, but maybe that is the case. It's, it's, it's a strange one because this track is so tight and twisty. Maybe that's the, the best way that they're not going to impede anyone by coming through the pits. And you can go slower, I guess. You go very slow, well. particularly if you get stopped at the way bridge. Perez improved by just one tenth on the last lap. Now gets back within a tenth of Leclerc's pace. There's still not much to choose between those two. So close. It's just Verstappen that's a real outlier now, nearly half a second away again. Everybody in the pits, the top ten at the moment. Leclerc, Perez, Sainz, Verstappen, Norris, Alonso, Hamilton, Russell, Ocon and Vettel. That's the top ten. Eliminated at the moment would be Magnussen, Bottas, Sonoda, Ricardo, Schumacher and Jenny Gao. <laughs> oh, no, you're I've always out. been eliminated. Yeah. Don't you worry about that. I'm always... No, I won't go there. Uh, 60 kilometres is a speed limit this weekend for the pit uh, lane, and that's quite unusual. It's normally 80, but obviously it's a bit skinny here. It's, it's got a problem. Is that the has got a problem? He can't get back to the... Oh, he's missed the Weybridge, I think, and they're trying to push him back, potentially. Yeah, I think that's probably correct. Because you can't... If you miss the Weybridge, you're in big trouble. You get fined. Yeah. Uh, or grid penalties, so you don't want to do that. Um, on the other side of the team, actually, it's worth saying that Carlos Sainz um, got a, another reprimand for impeding um, and a 25,000 euro fine last time out for grossly incorrect messages from the team about the gaps between cars. 
So, um, yeah, that a costly one. And, uh, yeah, Ferrari mustn't let anything operational get in the way of their great car performance and two drivers who seem to be, this weekend, on it. Leclerc currently on the Weybridge as uh, he comes back and then is put back on the Weybridge. They're really picking out the big guns for the yeah. Weybridge today, aren't they? We're seeing a lot of Weybridge action. Uh, maybe that's one thing that the, the local TV coverage is strong at. And maybe it happens every race, but we just never usually Send see it. Send a camera it. down to the Weybridge. Yeah. This is the footage we need. Is this, uh, well, everybody else is still in the pits at the moment, so I don't think this is costing Leclerc necessarily. Uh, Sainz's teammate is out on track. Hamilton is out on track on a new set of tyres, but Verstappen's still in the pits, so I don't think it's costing Leclerc too much currently. In fact, now he's on his way and getting his new tyres. Hamilton across the line to start a flyer. Seventh place at the moment for Hamilton, ahead of his teammate Russell. Big lap this for Hamilton. Oh, the tyres may be only good enough for one flying lap. He's got time for two, but he wasn't happy with uh, with the rear temperatures on the last run. So he's got the track to himself now, and the tyres are firing up for the first lap. Let's see what Hamilton can do. Through Casino Square, down the hill towards Mirabeau. Personal best in the first sector. It's not bad, but he's still two and a half tenths down on, uh, on Leclerc's flyer through there. Now coming into Portier at 50 miles an hour. Oh, another slide coming out of the, the second Mirabeau and down at Portier. Yeah, I think he must have blown this one. Looking now, all over the shot. Big slide, the second part of Portier. Had to properly opposite lock it and lost a lot of time there. He hit the wall down at Portier. Oh, and he's gone in terribly deep into it. That was scruffy as you like from Hamilton. That's a shame. He had the track to himself. He's in seventh, so he's at the moment in the top 10. He's got four tenths margin to Kevin Magnussen, who's in 11. He's not made the most out of that one, though. So he's got time to do a slow lap or two slow laps and go again. Was it last year qualifying he hit the barrier on the way into Portier, I think, and that's why he ended up so far down the field? Yeah. Uh, Ricardo is coming out of the final corner now in the McLaren. Leclerc's out on track. Perez and Verstappen both in the pit still. Again, it's the battle of the top 10 that is the one, and Ricardo slots into 10th place ahead of Vettel, Magnussen, Bottas, Sonoda, and Schumacher that would be the five drivers eliminated currently. Sonoda is uh, just coming into the final sector now to complete a lap. And he is about half a second down on Lando Norris by the looks of things. Norris goes up into fourth place and, okay, it wasn't quite as dramatic, but uh, it, him and Science got very close coming into the, the first corner. Sonoda goes up into seventh place. So Ricardo is immediately pushed down into 11th. He will get one more run here though. Ricardo, everyone will do one more lap and that lap will be starting imminently I think because no one's pushing right now. Bit of pressure building on the Mercedes duo then. Eight for Hamilton, ninth for Russell. Hamilton with one attempt of a fast lap but he backed out of it and uh, he's not pushing on this one as well. So he's gonna have one flyer. George Russell still behind him on the times by eight hundredths of a second is uh, just starting a flyer now. With the track evolution we saw in the last run, there's not much performance gap they've got to those in the drop zone they're going to need to, to dig in and find some pace I think both Hamilton and Russell so Leclerc and Sainz are both doing a prep lap so they're both they both left the pits and they're then doing a prep lap and then are going to do a push lap so we'll see whether that remains to be the case in Q3 because Red Bull are just doing an out lap and then pushing straight away so there's a, a notable difference between the two teams and how they are approaching it currently George Russell, meanwhile, is coming through the Nouvelle Chicane. His first sector is slower than Hamilton had managed uh, previously, though Hamilton didn't finish that lap, and he's six tenths down on Leclerc at the moment, George Russell, after the first two sectors. So might be able to get into Alonso territory here. You'd be hoping that he's going to get into Sonoda territory. Out across the line comes Russell. Ninth currently, and he does get ahead of Alonso and Sonoda. Uh, Hamilton is not flying in the first sector. Magnussen gets up to 10th place in the Haas. Mick Schumacher out across the line now. He only goes up into 13th position. But Hamilton's first sector is OK. But that's all. He's in ninth at the moment. Ocon's improving in 11th place. Ricardo's not improving. Vettel isn't really improving. Did Schumacher just come to a complete halt there? Maybe he was just keeping out of the way, but that looked a little bit like a complete halt for Schumacher. Ocon now, we'll see him through the middle sector. And he's up on Magnussen, but only by 600. So Hamilton's got a, 
a little bit of trouble here, although he is finding time now at the end of the mm, second sector. Ricardo is trying to improve. He made a poor first sector, but he's finding time in the middle. Could be in danger. He's out. Ricardo only 11th quickest. Ocon goes up into sixth place. So Hamilton is the man in 10th place who's on the bubble, but he comes across the line now and gets him into seventh. So it's going to be Sonoda unless... Sonoda will make it through unless Vettel and Bottas can do something here. Vettel's on an OK lap. Bottas is similar in the first sector. Bottas is not going to make it through. Okay, so Bottas has not had a decent middle sector. Vettel does. Wow, good lap from Vettel. So Sonoda eliminated in 11th place by the looks of things. Bottas was two tenths down on Sonoda after the second sector. Here comes Bottas out of the final corner and he only jumps up into 12th. So Sonoda 11th, 12th for Bottas, 13th Magnussen, 14th Daniel Ricciardo, uh, seven tenths away from his teammate and 15th Mick Schumacher. Schumacher just a tenth or so away from Kevin Magnussen. So Sonoda, Bottas, Magnussen, Ricardo, and Schumacher eliminated from Q2. And once again, Leclerc and Perez, less than a tenth between them, up at the top of the times. Verstappen fourth quickest. Norris did a great job. Yeah. Ricardo down in, uh, in 14th, Norris up in fifth, seven tenths ahead of his teammate, and actually only one tenth away from Verstappen, who improved right on that final lap as well to get closer to those guys in the front. Well done. It was a good job from Vettel, really yeah. good job. Looked like he didn't have it absolutely hooked up in Q1 and both Aston Martins were a bit on the back foot. He managed to find pace right at the end when Stroll didn't. Stroll went out and now he's into Q3. That the That's P12, unfortunately, P12. Well, I'm saying that was on the limit. I feel like we're seeing some, some better Vettel currently in recent races. I don't have any other specific examples that leap to mind, but I'm feeling like He's looking quite decent currently. After a year where, well, a, a tough year alongside Charles Leclerc, went to Aston Martin and didn't really make. The next five drivers eliminated. Yuki Tsunoda in 11th. Valtteri Bottas will be 12th on the grid. Kevin Magnussen 13th. Daniel Ricciardo in the McLaren knocked out in 14th place while his teammate Lando Norris was 5th and Mick Schumacher will be 15th. Once again, though, it looks like it's going to be Leclerc versus Perez in the battle for pole position that's about to start on Sports Extra. But yeah, Vettel just feels like he's doing all right at the moment. I don't have the numbers to back that up. It just feels like he's doing all right sometimes. I think Imola was a better weekend for him. Yeah. He, he missed the first two races of the year, let's not forget. Yeah, then true. turned up in Melbourne, and the, it was one of the worst team weekends of... of recent memory. I mean, they were both all over the place. Vettel and Stroll having a few crashes, having a few reliability woes, picking up fines for driving on the mopeds on the track. It was the weekend of nightmares for him. And he is just slowly rebuilding it. And Aston Martin, actually, I think they're getting back to a bit more performance as well. Their Miami weekend was, was good. Stroll actually was, was pretty solid in Miami. Barcelona, the new car that came out, didn't quite deliver here. Has done a decent job in the hands of Sebastian Vettel. Jenny Gao. Yeah, I think it's taken them a little bit of time, hasn't it, to get that car up to speed because obviously they did bring out this B spec version last time. They haven't tested it on the road, so they've only got sim kind of information, um, the likes. So I think it has been difficult for them. Stroll was obviously very disappointed to be out and to have made a mistake in the first part of qualifying, but Vettel overjoyed and understandably so it will be his best qualifying of the year so far so a big improvement from aston martin and vettel yep indeed and also just in the stroll battle as well the sort of intra-team uh, battle it's been a little bit stronger uh, but charles leclerc quickest second perez third sites verstappen was fourth two tenths between the top four then Norris, Ocon, Hamilton, Vettel, Russell and Alonso all making it through. Ocon did a decent job on his on his last run because he's been a bit adrift of Alonso so far this weekend. Did him by a tenth and uh, that puts Ocon sixth and Alonso in tenth. It was really tight, as always, in that midfield pack. Norris was clear of it by three tenths. Really good job from, from Lando. And both Alpines threw into, into the top ten. They started the week in FP1. <laughs> I thought they were a little bit underwhelming, but that shows how irrelevant FP1 is. They've built it up, and now they've got two drivers out there in the top ten. And if Ocon can finish this in sixth, it'll be some save from his weekend because he looks 
like he's been on the back foot so far. So the final part of qualifying is going to start in three minutes' time, just over three minutes' time. Jenny? Yeah, and Jazz down here with Alex Albert, who's trying to keep cool after qualifying, managed to finish in P16. And Alex, it's always horrible when you're out in the first part and just on the bubble as well. But those circumstances were a bit strange. They were. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if it benefited us or not, to be honest. I, I, I felt really good on, on, on the runs, on the second run, and the lap that I did at the time was was good and everything felt felt good. I, I felt like this, we maximized the lap and yeah, w almost we got a third chance. Everyone put a new set of tires on again and um, it's small margins. Um, it's small margins in terms of the deltas between other drivers but also the tires and, and I really struggled with uh, that final run. The tire window was so short. It was just a little bit um, of that waiting in the garage, everything cools down and um, I started my third push, I could tell the tyres were cold. I was sliding around a lot on that lap and uh, it didn't feel clean, it didn't feel pretty. Um, and yeah, we, we missed out, so uh, frustrating. A couple of moments until the final part of qualifying starts. Who are you backing? We've been playing this game all day, it's so hard to call. Uh, Charles, definitely Charles. Definitely Charles, I like that. Go and recover. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Alex Albin for Williams. Well, they're all a little gang, aren't they? Uh, Alban and Leclerc and Russell and... Yeah, but he was a Red Bull man. Not Red Bull anymore, is he? Yeah. He's shown his true colours today. He's having a great season, Alex Alban. Even if he's disappointed to be out, still uh, eight tenths up the road from, from Nicholas Latifi, whose season doesn't get any easier. And I, I, I'm really impressed with him. Didn't we talk about doing an Alban tomorrow as one of the strategies where you could potentially just go round, around, 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 around? come in on the last lap, switch onto the soft tyre from the hards and uh, and just give it a bit of a gamble and see what you can do. Could he's, be. He's Could remarkable be. at that. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's the Melbourne point earning strategy from Williams and, and Alpin. And that's the thing with these new rules for this year. The soft tyres that everyone's just used in Q2 don't have to be used to start the race. So Verstappen, if he's having a tough day, he can still make amends in the last part of qualifying here where it really counts. If he doesn't, he can do something a little bit funky on strategy and maybe run an album. Q3, beginning in 50 seconds time. Already Ferrari are uh, sending Leclerc out onto the track to get this first run underway. We'll see what the strategy is, whether they're doing prep laps or not, because what was it in, uh, I think Ferrari did a prep lap in Q2, Red Bull didn't, are those just trying to see whether they were new tyres for, uh, for 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 the Mercedes or not. It probably won't be, will they, on this uh, for this first lap? So there'll be old tyres, used tyres for the Mercedes crew. But Leclerc queued up at the end of the pit lane as Ferrari look for a bit of redemption, really, after having pole position last year. And everybody very keen to get out on track again. I mean, I know you sort of always get it in Monaco, but. It's interesting. They love it, don't they? Yeah. They want to get out there. The light goes green. Away goes Charles Leclerc. This is the part that counts then. All of the running that's taken place. And the little battle that's going on now between Leclerc and Perez goes out of the window. It's going to be about one or maybe two laps where you can hook it up. And in Monaco, what you want to be is the drive on provisional pole because you can never know what's going to happen on that last run. We saw it last year with Leclerc. It was on provisional pole. He hit the wall. No one else can improve. This first run of Q3 is more important here than it is on any other track because any yellow flag, anything that goes on, it locks you in position. OK, we are not doing prep. Try to push, not doing prep. Uh, I know, but uh, if they are doing prep, I'm going to be but OK. So, science being told, we're not doing a prep lap, and he's saying, OK, yeah, but if they are doing a prep lap, then we're going to be scuppered. If Mercedes and Rebel and everyone behind is doing a prep lap, they're going to come across them at the worst possible point, is, is sort of science's theory, I believe. That's because Leclerc's got out in front, he's the first driver out, then there's the two Mercedes, and then there's science. So he's worried that the Mercedes aren't going to push on this next lap, and he's going to be gunning for pole and have two Mercedes not going fully uh, at full tilt ahead. The Mercedes, I don't think they were on new, new tyres, though, so no, they, were used. they probably will just fire them up and go. Jenny? 
Yeah, just thinking about Leclerc, he likes to be in control of his own destiny, doesn't he? I think that's how he deals with the nerves. He just wants to get out there and set his own time. That's what he's doing right now. And he's climbing the hill now, up Beau Rivage, up towards Massenet. This is very much a push lap for Leclerc as he swings it right now past the casino. Down past the tip-top bar on his left-hand side and into the hairpin right-hander at Mirabeau. Then the tight, slow left-hander, the front left wheel coming off the ground as he turns through the downhill hairpin left. Leclerc's first sector is the fastest of the session so far. Verstappen comes across the line now, meanwhile. Carlos Sainz comes through sector one and is about a tenth or so down on Leclerc. This is really hooked up. He was absolutely on it through Santa Bot, turned it in and just drifted towards the apex of the first corner. Absolutely hooked up, millimetre perfect on the exit. He's really putting it together on this flyer. Sweep to the second part of the swimming pool. Now just arcing left towards Raskas. The final major corner. And then you have this little right fiddle through Anthony Nose. And he's up quite sparing of the barrier there, actually, out of the final corner. Here he goes to the line. 1 minute 11.3. Finds half a second from earlier on today. 1 minute 11.376 for Charles Leclerc. Sainz is on it as well, and he's pretty much matching Leclerc, actually, as he comes through the middle sector. He's within a tenth still through the middle sector, and he's gone past the Mercedes, so the Mercedes both did do slow laps. Sainz has passed them, and he goes second, two tenths away. Verstappen on a lap now, coming into the final corner. He's there or thereabouts, but as he comes out across the line, where's this going to put him? Third quickest for Carlos, uh, for uh, Max Verstappen. Third quickest, three tenths away. Perez now slots into third place ahead of Verstappen. Ferrari one, two. Perez third, Verstappen fourth. Leclerc, Sainz, Perez, Verstappen, the order after the first runs. Two tenths Leclerc has on the field. With Sainz, he found one of those tenths in the first sector, one in the third sector, the middle. There was nothing to separate them at all. And once again, Perez was, was close, but not quite there and lost a bit more in the final sector. I think Leclerc's final sector is, uh, is very good. And that's where he's made a bit of the margin. Two tenths to uh, Sainz, Perez and then Verstappen. He's got a march on them. Reasonable first sector for Hamilton. He's seven tenths down though after the middle sector, but he is on used tires, so he'll put some new ones on in a minute and then head out again. He almost gets a bit of traffic from Sainz, uh, from Leclerc, sorry. Leclerc's going to go for another lap here. Leclerc's lining it up for a, for a second lap with seven and a half minutes to go. Hamilton across the line remains in sixth position, but Leclerc is pushing again as he comes down towards saint -Devot. So they are doing two flying laps on these tyres. For many, he had a bit more fuel in the car as well, Charles Leclerc, for that first flyer, and he's hooking up a better first sector now as well. Red Bull are in the pits. In comes Max Verstappen, and uh, I think Sergio Perez will come in as well. So, diff And so does Carlos Sainz, interestingly enough. So it's only Leclerc that has stayed out to do another lap. And he's, he's backed off it then, actually, oh, yeah. at the end of the first sector. So Leclerc is going to come in at the end of this lap, I would have thought as well. One more lap for all of them. Leclerc, Sainz, the top two. Perez third, Verstappen fourth. Perez is going again. Perez didn't come in the pit, so Sainz and Verstappen pitted. Second for Sainz, fourth for Verstappen. Perez is third, and he is finding time in the first sector. He's only 300s down on Leclerc's first sector. That's much better for Sergio Perez, who has looked so far like the main man to challenge Charles Leclerc. He's now coming through the, the middle sector, down through Mirabeau, and then left at the, at the hotel airpin. Then before he turns right, through Portier and out under the tunnel. Emerges back into the brightness and gets onto the brakes into the Nouvelle Chicane. Bit of a slide in the middle part of the corner. He's not actually finding time. He was quick in sector one, but compared to Leclerc in the middle, he's half a second away. So this has gone for Perez. He'll be pitting at the end of this lap. It looks more and more like it's a one lap thing now yeah. for, for these soft tires. We've heard it already for, for Hamilton, who didn't like his one cool down lap and uh, couldn't make it stick earlier on. Perez is going to complete the lap, so he's actually given himself a pretty tight window to go for a final run. He completes the lap and it's very slow, 2.8 seconds away from Leclerc in the end, backed off it. He fully backed off in the final sector. I think he must be trying to recharge the battery then, to get because in one out lap it's tough to, uh, to recharge around here, so I think he's probably having to do that. He's only got five and a half minutes to come back in change the tyres and then go again. I think that's enough time though because it's such a short lap. Yeah. 
Jenny. Is that a mistake from Red Bull, letting him out to, to try and do that and then having to abort and, and recharge to come back in? It just seems a bit clunky. It'll be, I think it'll be driver choice to try and go for two laps. Leclerc did the same, but Leclerc did pit, so he's got a bit more time breathing space in the garage, whereas Perez completing that lap will, will make his garage time a bit rushed in Q3. I think it will be a driver preference thing where he just wants to have another lap pushing on low fuel right at the end of Q3 before he's going to come back in, still have time to pit for the new boots and go for pole. Five minutes to go. Well, four minutes and 48 seconds to go in qualifying for the Monaco Grand Prix here on uh, Sports Extra. And it is Charles Leclerc at the moment who's on provisional pole position ahead of Carlos Sainz. The two Mercedes are leaving the pit lane now. Perez is back into the pits and the Mercedes are heading out. Jenny. Such different conditions down here now. There are dark clouds beginning to hover over the cliffs uh, and the mountains that wrap around Monaco. Thunderstorms expected in the next couple of hours could well wash away all the rubber that's been laid down today, couldn't it? How soon are the thunderstorms expected? A couple of hours. OK, interesting. Interesting. So the Checker Flag podcast outside on a boat isn't seeming like such a good idea now, is it? I'm worried. I'm very worried. Not as worried as Max Verstappen, though. Fourth quickest on the first runs. And now the Red Bull driver is climbing the hill up Beau Ravage, then left into Massenet. Down through the right-hander of uh, Casino. It's a quarter of a second down in the first sector alone. He's still not there. Interestingly, he's gone early enough that he has two flying laps in him. Verstappen, Leclerc, Sainz and Perez all still in the garage. Fernando Alonso's done a decent job to go fifth on a set of new tyres in the Alpine. He's in the garage. And Verstappen has gone early enough, I, I think because he knows he's on the back foot. He wants two, two bites at this. And it's going to come with a bit of cost of tyres and carry the extra couple of laps of fuel as well for this first flyer. And he's not hooking it up. Through the middle sector now, he's three tenths away from Leclerc. Exit of the swimming pool. And the only driver improving at the moment is Lando Norris. Seitz and Leclerc have just left the pit lane with less than three minutes to go. Norris through the middle sector has done a... It's a decent, decent dish lap actually coming in here from, from Norris. He matched the uh, Leclerc in the middle sector. He was about three tenths away in sector one, but this is not too bad. Right up to the wall on the exit at uh, Anthony Nogues, and Norris does go up into fifth place. Only two tenths from Verstappen. What a lap from Norris. I thought he was going to sideswipe the wall <laughs> at Anthony Nogues and brace for impact as we went on board with him. And he's only gone less than two tenths away from Verstappen on his new tyres in the McLaren. I'll try my best, but this off yeah, yeah, yeah. to be it. OK. Yes, it is the battle for pole position here at the Monaco Grand Prix. Everybody about to start their flying lap. Charles Leclerc is on provisional pole at the moment. Carlos Sainz is second. Sergio Perez third. And championship leader Max Verstappen only in fourth. Lewis Hamilton's in seventh. The former Renault F1 driver Jolian Palmer is alongside me. Leclerc not very happy on the team radio there, just uh, not happy with when he's been sent out onto the track. Yeah, agitated. He had nice, clean track for the first run, but he hasn't now, and uh, he's, he's got enough time to try and sort it out. Less than two minutes left on the clock, but it's basically going to boil down to one flying lap, and at the moment, he's got just over two tenths to his nearest rival, which is also his teammate. George Russell goes sixth fastest for Mercedes, three tenths slower than Lando Norris. The McLaren drivers put in an excellent lap to be fifth provisionally, but... It's about the battle for pole. Leclerc is going to be the first driver across the line. Sergio Perez is looking like the quicker of the two Red Bulls at the moment. But Leclerc comes across the line now to start his final lap of the session. The home hero, the Monegasque man who took pole position last season but then couldn't take the start of the race. And he is throwing it up through Massonet at the top of the hill. Swings it right past the Monte Carlo Casino and then drops down into the slow, twisty hairpins, the right and the left. And he is absolutely rapid through the first sector, more than a tenth quicker than Sergio Perez in the Red Bull. Huge, huge first sector for Leclerc. Perez has been what has looked like his major rival throughout the weekend so far, and he's not done a good first sector. Nor has Sainz in the other Ferrari. Oh, Sainz is not good. Perez spun, I think, coming out of Portier. And so Leclerc has got past, so he should be able to... Oh, and he has! Perez has hit the barrier and Sainz has hit him. And the track is blocked at Portier and the entry to the tunnel. So Verstappen can't do it. 
and the red flag is out. And I think that will give Charles Leclerc pole position. I'm out, man. Sorry. Perez has crashed, blocked the track. The session is stopped, and Charles Leclerc will start on pole position for Ferrari at his home Grand Prix. Sainz second, third for Perez, fourth for Verstappen, and what a Monte Carlo way to end the session. Fernando Alonso is in the wall as well, down at Mirabeau. Yeah, it's from a yellow flag late. So Perez has crashed out, Sainz has then hit him, Verstappen's road is blocked, Alonso's in the wall, but Leclerc will be on pole. Carnage. Last year, it was Leclerc causing the blockage, and he was on pole, but couldn't take it. This year, it's practically everyone else that's caused the carnage, which has given local Monegas driver Charles Leclerc pole position. He's absolutely deserved it. He's been clear of the field, really, in this hour. And it was the easy way in the end. Yeah, exactly. Almost the opposite to last year, wasn't it? And no one else was really troubling him either. He was absolutely launching into a flyer as Perez behind was a couple of tenths down in the first sector. Sainz wasn't hooking it up either and then hooked Sergio Perez's stricken Red Bull. Verstappen was actually looking like the major threat. Oh, that last lap was... I don't know if everyone was improving that much, but it felt good. That's Charles Leclerc, happy with his last lap, happy with pole position, where he will start tomorrow afternoon for the Monaco Grand Prix. We'll have full reaction to the qualifying available in the Checker Flag podcast a little bit later, Lance. Sonia. Uh, I'm really sad we didn't get to see the end of Leclerc's lap. That was really great. Although maybe he would have just put it in the wall at swimming pool exit, but he was about to thump in. Uh, one of the great laps, yeah. Wasn't he? I think he was on an absolute stormer. Uh, big, big shunt for Perez actually. Looped it through Potier. It's quite a, a significant amount of damage to the to the rear axle and the wing. Yeah, he just really just yet yeah, spun it in. There's no other way of saying it. And I've not really seen drivers go in there like that. And then Science came through. Suddenly Perez is there. He tries to, I guess, intentionally kind of spin out the way. I don't really know how to describe it. Synchronized, really. It looked like he was, you know, was oil down or something for, for the moment. There wouldn't have been, I'm sure. But yeah, it just went just on uh, as he was turning into the apex there, Sergio Perez, and that was him out. And then suddenly, Carlos Sainz appears and, and gives him a whack from the front. Oh, Sainz was was caught blind a little bit as we just caught an onboard with him. You just saw Perez suddenly broadside on your racing line on the exit. Now, was there yellow flags out? And should Sainz have seen them? Because crashing into a stricken car, yeah. even if it's blocking a bit of the road in Monaco, is is not not acceptable thing to do. If there were yellow flags out, then he might get into a bit of trouble for that. He had only just gone in though, hadn't he? Uh, yeah, he was close. Was he was quite close by. So maybe the yellow flags weren't really there, or yeah. weren't didn't come out or quick just enough going for, out for, out for Sainz. He Jen did he did say that he couldn't see them. Yeah, Jenny Gao. Yeah, just looking at that impact again with a bevy of F1 drivers who were all standing around watching the same monitor as me to see what had happened. I worry about Perez's gearbox in that one. It was quite a big shunt to the rear end of the car. Um, they'll obviously have a look at it, but um, Perez will be so frustrated as well. He's, he showed such form, such class this weekend. Fastest in free practice three, and then it crashes out right at the end of qualifying. And all the other drivers, are they going to be going, come on? Um, because that's, fr that's frustrating for everybody. Well, Hamilton, for example, didn't get a lap in on, on new tyres. Russell did, but only got ahead of uh, Alonso in the Alpine, and uh, Alonso didn't set one either. Norris had a tremendous session, fifth in the grid. I'll give you the order, shall I? Leclerc on pole, Sainz second, the Ferrari lockout on the front row, Perez third, Verstappen fourth, Norris fifth in a very good performance, Russell sixth, seventh for Alonso, eighth for Hamilton, ninth for Vettel, 10th for Ocon, and then Sonoda, Bottas, Magnussen, Ricardo, Schumacher, the top 15, Albon, Gasly, Stroll, Latifi, Joe. The 20 drivers. So, yeah, Ferrari lockout. I think for the Grand Prix, could have done with a, a Red Bull in there. Strategy can come into play. Yeah, they've got nothing to lose. They've got to do something a bit different, I think, Red Bull. Fourth for Verstappen, though. Verstappen actually did his best first sector on that last lap by a good chunk. He was his best, it was a first sector better than Perez or Sainz had done. Yeah. And so I think he's gonna be really miffed because it, maybe it was just coming for him on the final lap there and he starts only fourth. Jenny? Yeah, I'm just thinking, Hamilton didn't do his run on the softs, the new softs. Can they do anything with that? Is it extra 
set of soft tyres that are new up his sleeve, good for the start of the race, maybe? He'll use them tomorrow, but they, he still was out on them. They're not going to be absolutely brand spankers. They'll just be half a lap less pushing than, than everyone else, or maybe more than that. I don't think it's going to save them. And, and we know that this race has done so much on qualifying and or strategy. Hamilton looked pretty miffed as he was heading down to go and get Wade, kept the helmet on, another qualifying session where he's been beaten by George Russell. Yeah. I mean, Russell got a bit fortunate with safety cars again today, didn't he? Because he just, he just finished his lap when the red flag came out and Hamilton wasn't allowed to, to finish his. So it's another one that can't quite be directly comparable. Jenny? I think I pondered, didn't I, is, is George Russell um, one of the luckiest men in Formula One at the moment? And it's certainly, again, as you say, he's got the rub of the green. It, he's not probably allowed to go and gamble in the casino, but maybe he should. Let's hear from Charles Leclerc now. He's talking to Guido van der Gaarde after second pole position for the Monaco Grand Prix. That's how you pronounce it. It's true. Charles Leclerc, pole position on your home soil. That means to me very, very special. It is very special. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so incredibly happy. Uh, it's been a very smooth weekend until now. I knew the pace was was in the car. I just had to do the job, and uh, and yeah, and it went perfectly. That last lap before the red flag was really really good, but yeah. Anyway, it didn't change anything for us. But the last lap, uh, uh, I think you were two tenths up compared to the lap before. That looked really really strong, eh? Yeah, and it was really, really on the limit. I had quite a bit of oversteer. I struggled to put the tires in the right window in the in the last sector because there was a bit of traffic. Uh, but at the end, yeah, the, the rear was a bit loose, but but still the lap time came and uh, and I was improving quite a bit. I think I was four tenths faster before I, I stopped. So it was a, a good lap. But to be honest, the, the car felt amazing and uh, it's great to also have Carlos uh, with, uh, with me uh, on the front row. Yeah, I think that must be very good uh, front row lookout for Ferrari, of course. Uh, tomorrow there's a chance of rain. What do you hoping? Rain or, or dry? Well, I think uh, dry is a bit more predictable, uh, but uh, whatever comes, I think we are competitive, so it will be fine. Perfect. Good luck, man. Thank you. Let's see. So that was uh, Charles Leclerc, the pole sitter for Ferrari speaking after the uh, after taking pole position and uh, it was quite a, it was a long way up after he had pole position in the bag so he hasn't sort of lucked into that this one by uh, by any stretch of the imagination I don't think Charles Leclerc uh, Carlos Sainz second Perez in third Verstappen in fourth Norris in fifth Russell Alonso Hamilton Vettel and Ocon the top 10 after after Q3, Jenny. If you're wondering where the other interviews have gone, well, they're still out on track, so <laughs> we won't be able to hear yeah, from them after all, the... They're all in the wall. Yeah, they're trying to dig themselves out of the wall and pick up the bits of their car that are scattered over um, the, the turn into the tunnel, which I eloquently managed to mess up. Anyway, um, come back, join us tomorrow, because the race is going to be a fascinating watch. What will happen? I know sometimes... It's not the most exciting and thrilling of races, but rain is on the way. The dark clouds now looming over our heads. So it's all set up, isn't it? Coverage of the race gets underway from 12 o'clock midday on uh, Five Live Sport, and the race actually gets underway at two o'clock. This has been an IMG production for BBC Radio Five Live. Make sure you download the Checkered Flag podcast later from us. Goodbye.